Banks, firms and government offices to reopen as the COVID-19 cases increase to over 1,728 cases. And also, Kaduna State Governor slashes salaries of senior civil servants in an effort to fight the COVID-19 pandemic in the state, but Labour is not having it. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. It seems the cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria is not slowing down anytime soon, as Nigeria has recorded 196 cases in just one day, and now the number of cases stands at 1,728. And in this reality, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 has directed government offices, banks, and manufacturing companies to reopen on Monday, the 4th of April, 2020. And in Anambra, a state which has recorded only one case, the state governor, Willie Obiano, has directed all workers in the state to resume work on the same day. Are these resumptions coming at the wrong time? And joining us to have a conversation around this is Lekon Latiche, a medical practitioner via Skype. Thank you, Lekon, for joining us this evening. Thank you. And also we have a political analyst with us, Dami Adebayo. Thank you, Dami, for joining us also via Skype. My pleasure. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you very much, Sammy. The Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 has directed government offices, banks, and manufacturing companies to reopen on Monday. Let, let's contemplate the workings of this directive in the light of the necessity for social distancing. And I want to go with the doctor first. Dr. Lecon, your reaction to this? Well, um, I think we had, uh, we, the, the options are Quite, it's, it's quite clear what we should be doing. Um, we don't have options. Our economy is already has suffered from the, the effect of this uh, this new virus, this infection. And I think that uh, the decision to reopen uh, on Monday is it's, it's, it's the right decision. Yes. In the light of social distancing and given the fact that people have to compulsory wear masks and that there are many factors to consider here. Dami, I need your thoughts yeah. on this. Um, I think for me, the decision for um, workers to resume work is a bit premature. But how I do defer to the doctor and his medical advice, we do need to consider the fact that we are not equipped to handle a pandemic if it did grow any larger than this as well. So we're already at our worst case scenario. We have places, we have Lagos, where we don't have enough beds to treat people, the number of cases of people that are being infected as well. And the thing is, we already have an already weak medical system. And there'd be no economy if a lot of those people were ill as well. A lockdown for another month or two as well, our economy will survive it. This is what people might think. I think the true test would be if we're able to um, fight the virus and fight it effectively. And we do know that the lockdown is possibly the... Uh, one of the most effective ways of fighting it as well. Now, Dr. Lekon, uh, a, a group of doctors, on, um, yeah. a group of doctors, and also even last week Friday year, the NCDC had said that uh, exiting the lockdown, uh, it's not the solution uh, at this moment because we're seeing increased number of cases. Now, people are going to resume work on Monday. Um, there'll be a whole lot of people on the streets. And how effective will social distancing be at this at this point in time? given the fact that already people didn't necessarily maintain that even while the lockdown was going on. Isn't that a possibility for further spread of the virus? Oh, yes. Like, um, like I said uh, before, we would definitely see uh, a rise in the cases uh, that we are going to have. I think, I think we, should, we also need to know the difference between having cases and having fatality, having people being hospitalized. A lot of people, um, I mean, who will have this infection, just very little fraction will be needing hospital admission. Quite a number of people will recover at home. Don't be surprised that um, quite a number of people actually have, have had this infection and have recovered without anybody knowing because we are not testing. You, you, you can't say, I mean, for sure, if you have tested just, uh, just way by above 12,000 people, and then you, you now want to extrapolate and judge based on that. You know, like I said earlier on, what are the other options that we have? It's very easy to criticize the government that, oh, okay, well, we, are, we, we should shut down for longer. This virus is not going to leave us anytime soon. It's going to be around for a while. So, okay, well, if we say, okay, we shut down, this is the rainy season, farmers need to go to, I mean, they need to go to the farm, otherwise you and I will starve. 
You know, the economy is already, you know, a lot of people who had small scale, in, um, 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 they had their businesses have already suffered from uh, the effect of COVID. A lot of people, uh, the little savings they had, and even some of their capital they spent. So starting life all over in a country where poverty is all of the day is going to be difficult if we say we should extend lockdown. Now, coming to social distancing, I think if we can, it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult thing because one, look at our transportation system. You know, I'll use Lagos, for example, the number of people you have in a bus taking Nigerians from one point to another. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying. I think the use of face masks will really go a long way so that um, uh, respiratory um, hygiene will be key. Use a face mask, you protect yourself and you're protecting others. Now, you also ask me, there are various types of jobs, people who are, I mean, people like artisans. How do you think they will fare, you know? Someone who is a mechanic, for example, or a bricklayer, how is he going to be able to uh, do his job with a face mask? But I think, by and large, in a public place, um, government can enforce the use of face masks. Social distancing, believe me, is going to be very difficult with, the, with our own setting. So we have to look at what works, what will work for us, not necessarily what others are doing. Even the so-called countries with robust economy now, they are beginning to open up because they know you can't lock down forever. Yeah, but you, yes, know, in, in you have that, to be able to yes, save Lico, your life. Yes, Dr. Lico, in saying that the other countries with robust economies, um, we, we can't necessarily begin to draw by way of comparison uh, the, the measures they put in place um, and the measures we had in place, we are peculiar people. So I, I don't think we, we had the same measure of precaution and prevention they had in place that, that we did. And now here is the workforce resuming on Monday. People are definitely going to be in contact with one another. Now you were talking about the death, um, the, the fatality rate. What about the rate of infection? Doesn't this in any way um, make that increase? Are you saying people now mixing with one another. Remember, um, some people are symptomatic. Isn't there a possibility exactly. of an increase of we infection? Not compare, we, we, we're not going to be comparing ourselves with other countries, like I said. We need to look at what will work in our environment. We've only tested 12,000 plus out of 200 million people. Which is so who says you and I have not had COVID and recovered? So what we should be bothered about should be, we should lay more emphasis on mortality on hospitalization, on critical patients who will be critically ill in the setting of COVID-19. But doctor, what about people the people who will be Dr. Lico, in hospital? Dr. Lico, Dr. Lico, that we need to what about the yes, people who are asymptomatic, who will now be mixing with people who necessarily don't have it? Isn't that a concern also? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you should be concerned. What we need to do in this setting is to test more. I'm glad um, NCDC just yesterday came up with the COBAS testing, where they were able to run, I think, 950 or so uh, uh, samples within a few hours. I mean, that is the way to go. The more you can test, then the better and the more comfortable you get, so that the ones that will be found positive will isolate. Right. I think that's what is important. Oh, all right, Danny. We, we don't, we don't, it's on that we don't have uh, the capacity okay. to test virtually everyone. All but right, what I think um, we need to do in this setting is to ensure that we have, we, we enforce the use of face masks in the public space. If oh, you go know. to the bank and you're not allowed to get it in because you don't have a face mask, you know, that's a way of enforcing these things. And then all uh, offices, even the government offices, people should be responsible, you know, as to even get it and even say, okay, well, we are resuming on Monday. Ensure that everyone that is coming to these government offices have, uh, is wearing a face mask. I think that's the way to go. We, All right. we cannot lock down forever. Okay, doctor, doctor, we Lico. Cannot doctor Lico, okay, I need, I need to I need to speak with Dami now. Now, Dami, whether we like it or not, fourth of May is here with us, um, the fourth of May is with us. And the guidelines for the gradual reopening of the economy were stated. But we know implementation is critical at this point. How can we ensure for full compliance if it's even possible? Um, it's not, and like we said as well, this is one of those things where we've um, decided uh, we know the risks and we've decided to go ahead with it as well. So um, the, the the reduction in the lockdown, as we or as they'd like to call it, is essentially us going back to status quo, and it's, it's essentially admitting that the lockdown has failed as well. Because if we do agree that the lockdown, the process of a uh, of the lockdown was for us to test, trace and isolate people. 
because as that happened to the initiative measure, where we actually have reached the peak pandemic, we cannot wholeheartedly say that. We're looking at the cases rising, and we're saying that we think people should be allowed to move around and to let this thing spread as well. Um, my biggest worry isn't the fact that the mortality rate is low. I'm the fact that we do not have tools of health that to survive. I don't understand the uh, fact that we can't stay grounded forever. So the point is, until the cases start to reduce, until we start to see some efficacy in the limited numbers of tests that are being done as well, at the moment we've only done over 12,000 tests. It's an additional allegedly 200 million people. I mean, we're nowhere close as well. That's not any local government in this country. So what we're saying is that we're going to put people in harm's way, people that we know that we can't treat if they get infected, people that we know form the backbone of this economy anyway. So people are locked in right now and they can't go to work. But that is a physical, you know, that is obviously something that has to do with them being restricted. If they cannot work as a result of, you know, being infected as well, then I think we'd be seeing a whole different picture than um, what we can even deal with. Now, let's take a look at the banks and its operations, Dami, if you will. They, they will only open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. with not more than 20 customers in 8 past service time. And they must and are expected to adhere to social distancing measures. How doable is this? In the banking hall with not more than 20 people, and that is a size the staff, the teller, the bank tellers who will be attending to these not more than 20 people in the banking hall per, per service time. Uh, but I, my, my greatest worry is really not the banks. Um, I think banks can afford to, you know, disinfect, enforce people with face masks and, you know, get in as well. I think my biggest worry is the transportation system as well. Our transportation system is hardly regulated. It's under equipped. And, you know, we've, we've shown that, you know, in a lot of the metropolitans across the um, country as well, that we have little or no control over the operators as well. So I think that is my biggest worry. So the back end holds not so much. Transportation, yes, that is, you know, that I think is where we're going to see um, um, higher risks of um, transmission and infection. Dr. Lincoln, yes, we know that this phase strategy is designed to reduce the, the pains of socioeconomic disruptions, but does this strengthen our public health responses in the fight against COVID-19? Because you're pretty much concerned about the, the socioeconomic downturns that this pandemic has brought, but does this strengthen our, our, health, our, our health responses in the light of COVID-19? Oh, yes. Um, let me say this. Uh, um, I mean, my, my friend over there, has said something very important, transportation. That's where the problem will be. But let us also, also remember that um, we are seeing more cases because we are doing more testing. We're increasing our capacity to test. That's the reason why it seems like there are more people coming down with this illness. If you remember what I just said, quite a number of Nigerians have had this illness, they've had the infection, and they've recovered from it without anybody knowing. Community spread did not start now. It started way back. The period when we got it wrong was when we allowed Nigerians in the diaspora to come back without necessarily asking them to go on, uh, I mean, isolating them from the society. That is where we got this thing wrong. If we had sat down, done our homework well, make sure that uh, we, the government identifies two, three hotels in close to our airports in the country, Lagos, um, Lagos, Abuja, uh, Port Harcourt, and I think Kanu, these are the international airports that we had. The moment Nigerians are coming in, we pick them up from, with coastal buses straight to the hotel, isolate them for 14 days, NCDC is testing, and then the ones that are fine, you let them reunite with their family. We will not be in this situation. So that was where we got it wrong. But at this time, we are seeing more cases because we are doing more testing. When this whole thing started and then we had the capacity to test was so, so poor, now we're improving it. We're testing more, patient, uh, more, more Nigerians on a daily basis. And so we are, it now looks like we are, we are having more cases. Believe me, even the so-called lockdown that we had, was that really a lockdown? Dr. Where Lekon. you allow people to Dr. market on certain days? Yeah, Dr. Lekon, hold, hold your thoughts right there. Dr. Lekon, please hold your thoughts right there. I want to take you on a statement you, you've made twice now that prior to, to the emergence of COVID-19, that many people have had COVID, have, have had this virus, and they got cured without knowing it. What exactly are you, are you saying here? What I'm saying is that because we are not testing, 
perhaps a lot of us may have had this. We have had COVID-19 infection. We were, we were not symptomatic. And so we recovered from it because we didn't test. It was the moment when without, we without any treatment, without any treatment, test, without any treatment, treatment, without any treatment, you know, without any treatment, you know, it, it, I mean, it, it's not so so much different from the flu that everyone has, you know. Some people will even be symptom. I mean, you had no symptoms. So let's face it. Um, we got it all wrong at the moment where we didn't um, make sure that everyone goes into isolation or you quarantine people coming in from uh, the diaspora. People coming back, Nigerians coming back into the country, at that point, we should have had some level of uh, quarantine. We allowed them going back into the society. They were, everyone went back to join his family. They got reunited with their family. And, and so that's why we are seeing uh, the, I mean, the number of cases that we, we've had. Um, I, I'm not surprised that this has happened because um, we, we didn't, we, that was where we got it wrong. Oh, we I... should have um, isolated Nigerians who came back. Okay. Uh, All right, Dr. Um, Dr. Lincoln, quickly, I need your reaction to this before I go over to Dami. Doctors under the ages of medical guild have warned against easing the lockdown, saying it will lead to more exposures and surging COVID-19 pandemic infection. Now, these are your own people saying this. I need, I need your quick reaction to this. Yeah, my, my reaction to it is um, that, okay, if you don't, if, which other option do we have? We keep, I mean, we continue with the lockdown. For how long do we intend to do that? You know, the virus is going to be with us for a, a very reasonable length of time. Let's come to face it. And so, um, yes, we, we may see some increase in the number of cases, absolutely, because, I mean, people are now allowed to move around freely. And so you expect um, some increase in the number of cases that NCDC will diagnose. But as, it, as, much, as long as we're not testing, we're not testing enough Nigerians, we may not really get the true picture because we can't even tell when we are, we've gotten to our peak because we're not testing. So what we'll yeah. find in this situation is that you will not find an exponential rise. I don't think it's, it's going to be that bad, you know, but definitely there will be a, um, a rise in number of cases that we'll see because we are now allowed to move around you know, okay. um, that, that will happen. But you know, it, it, there must be a balance between our lives and our livelihood. We have to be able to save the two. There will be no, I mean, if, if we lock down, say four or five months, and we come back to nothing, you know, the way it is now is, is as bad because uh, like I said, a lot of people have lost their source of livelihood. Okay, just, Dami, just yes. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me throw this to Dami. Dami, the, the guild chairman, Dr. Ola Oluwajimi Sodipo, in an interview with Nan on Tuesday in Lagos, said that the objective of the lockdown has yet to be fully maximized. Do you agree with him? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, well, like I said, yes, I agree with him because uh, if, if, if only we're able to perhaps stay, uh, I mean, under lockdown for longer, Maybe that will help. But like I said, even the lockdown, how effective was it? You still see cars on the road. Okay. And I, like I said, also, you, you still allow people to go into um, the market on certain days. Okay. And then you, you see a crowd in the market. All right, Dr. Dr. So Lincoln, you, just you hold, it, hold it there. Our, our system is such that we cannot afford a complete lockdown the okay. way we have it in the West, where you can virtually buy everything online. And All right. it Dami, okay, Dr. Dr. Lincoln, just let me talk with Dami for a moment. Um, we're running out of time now. Dami, if the initial aim of the lockdown hasn't been achieved, is there a need for us to leave the lockdown prematurely then? Uh, I think what's going to happen is we're going to leave the lockdown and we're going to return to it. And we've seen it happen in very many countries. And the thing is, we, could, we have the opportunity to have done this once properly and to have done it, for, um, you know, in the best way possible to handle it, and we have, which means we're probably going to come back to this again, and the lockdown option is not off the table. But again, my point is, a lot of things have been changed, just like the good doctor said as well. You know, our testing cap um, capability at 2,500 a day isn't enough, you know. And 2,500 isn't even happening as well. We have states complaining about not having reagents to, you know, from the test as well. So we're at this a very delicate situation, which I understand for a lot of people, that they're considering their livelihoods and their lives as well. Um, and that, you know, a lot of people have lost their livelihoods over this thing. And I understand and I empathize as well. But the thing is, we're probably still going to have to come back to this, you know, 
and we'll still deal with the same problem that people are complaining about now as well. So by way of recommendation, both of you, Dami, I'll start with you. By way of recommendation, quickly, please. What would you recommend? Extend the lockdown for another two weeks. If we don't see it slowing, then we might start to stagger opening. Uh, and, and Dr. Lekon, what would you recommend at this point in time? Well, I would say we reopen the way the government has planned it, but try and enforce the use of the face mask in the general, I mean, in, in the public space. Ensure that that is done properly. Ensure uh, proper respiratory uh, hygiene when people blow their nose in the public and all that. And uh, I think this is achievable. Because um, when you talk about an illness and you should look, what, what, what is very important is the number of deaths. As long as we are not recording more deaths, we will be fine. All right, we're not, you. I mean, thank we you, don't gentlemen. have an exponential increase we're, in we're out of time for this such segment. a way that it now overcomes or overwhelms our health system. Dr. Leko Olatishe, thank you very much for yes. joining me and for your contribution. And also political analyst, Damia Debayo, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Have a great night. Bye-bye. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now and when we return. In an effort to take care of underprivileged residents in Kaduna State, Governor Nasser Erufai cut salaries of civil servants. This will be up next for discussion. Stay with us.